How was it the first, you guys came face to face for the first time just a couple of days ago. What was that, that face to face like? It, I just laughed. Like I did the face off and then I like walked away and I just laughed to myself. Jake Paul just came face to face with Mike Tyson and it appears that things are getting more intense from here. This is insane. On my screen, my eyeballs are the one facing off against Mike Tyson and it just, I just couldn't believe it. And the fact that it's on Netflix, I think that's gonna like really revolutionize the game in boxing. I think streaming could potentially be like a very bright future for the sport. The contentious matchup has sparked a rift among fans and participants in the combat sports sphere, as numerous voices express vehement disapproval toward Tyson and Paul's decision to step into the ring together. Dana White, the outspoken head of the UFC, stands out as one of the most vocal cynics, never shy to express his views, even though he maintains a positive rapport with Tyson. White recently explained on the pound for pound podcast i hate talking about it because he always gets mad at me when i talk about this stuff but um you know oh, he'll give a f too he'll uh i'm he'll not thrilled to see him do this stuff but um you know when the fight happens he'll be 58 years old similar to numerous others expressing apprehension after the bout was announced white's primary objection stems from the significant age gap between the competing fighters he said when the fight happens he'll be 58 years old it will be a 31 year age difference you know jake paul did fight a kid his own age and he lost white went as far as accusing paul of lacking genuine passion for the sport despite the 27 year old consistently affirming his aspirations to eventually claim the title of world champion in boxing white continued i saw this thing on the internet yesterday that if he beats Mike Tyson, he'll fight Clint Eastwood next. Clint Eastwood is 93 years old. When the discussion shifted to Paul's reputation, as a formidable fighter, White swiftly interjected, cutting off former UFC champion Kamara Usman to emphatically express his sentiments. White ranted, but he doesn't. He doesn't want to be a respected fighter. What Jake wants is to make money. People who follow Jake Paul don't buy Jake Paul's fights. So, Jake Paul has to fight people who can sell actual pay-per-views. Meanwhile, the upcoming fight is not something boxing legend Bernard Hopkins is into at all. The seasoned world champion strongly believes Tyson's decision to step into the ring with Paul is a grave error. Tyson, a legend and titan in boxing history, commands immense respect from Hopkins, which is precisely why he vehemently opposes the idea of Tyson engaging in combat with Paul. Hopkins recently told Fight Hub TV, I don't like it. I look at Mike, I look at him differently in a way of my era, like people looked at Ali. I looked at Ali differently too. Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Robinson. Hopkins believes that Tyson's decision to step into the ring at the age of 57 casts a shadow on his esteemed legacy. He perceives it as diminishing Tyson's stature in the boxing world to engage in a match against someone of Paul's caliber. Hopkins added, I think it's becoming more of a sideshow, with some sweat and maybe some blood if we're lucky. I won't watch it. I could watch two turtles race and be more excited. Bernard Hopkins expressed his disapproval, attributing his viewpoint to the respect and admiration he has for Mike Tyson, stemming from their shared experiences in the boxing ring and era. Hopkins said, it's because of how I look at Mike Tyson. I've shared not only the ring with Mike Tyson a few times, but the era, a little tip of the era. I just think it degrades him. You're getting 100 million, 200 million dollars. Please, okay. Now, we know that Paul and Tyson stood eye to eye in a breathtaking Taking promotional video unveiling their upcoming showdown, sending shockwaves throughout the boxing community. The atmosphere took a sharp turn for the worse during their promotional photo session as Paul openly admitted to feeling tense while facing off against his adversary. To like shaking his hand when we were at the shoot, this motherfucker is strong. Like the probably the strongest handshake. You think it was intentional? Or I, I don't just... know. I don't know. Because it was, it, I don't think he was like trying to squeeze but you could just feel his like hands are like brick. During an episode of the BS with Jake Paul podcast, Brandon Amato remarked on the changed dynamics between Paul and Tyson during a recent shoot, highlighting that despite their past amiable interactions, there was a noticeable lack of friendliness this time around. And you guys, that whole shoot was that in the past, you and Mike have been so friendly. Yeah. You weren't friendly the whole time. We were there for seven hours. There was no friendly laughing or giggling. He was like, it was like a different mode that he yeah, was Yeah, it's weird. Oh, I don't know. Scary. It's weird. Like, scary. What? Jake Paul responded, acknowledging the shift in their relationship. He explained that signing the fight contract altered their dynamic as it introduced a competitive element to their interaction. Despite this change, Paul emphasized his deep respect and love for Tyson, stating that he felt honored to be fighting him. However, he stressed that their upcoming bout meant they were in a state of competition, which naturally influenced their interactions. When Killer you sign the contract, 
something changes, right? Like, even if we want to feel that, it's still like, yo, we are facing off. So like, obviously I love him, respect him so much. I'm, I'm honored to be going into the ring with him, but bro, we're fighting each other. Mutual admiration has long defined the dynamic between Tyson and Paul, their banter often hinting at an eagerly anticipated clash, fueled by the immense commercial prospects it holds. Nonetheless, the gravity of the upcoming summer skirmishes cannot be understated, as fighters may adhere to the protocols of professional combat by exchanging glove touches. Here is what Paul said about facing Tyson. I, Mike, I, I really want to see, bro. Let's see all the legends, the myths, because you're Iron Mike Tyson, but I have an iron chin. People know that, like, I, I take shots. So I think people are underestimating that me being able to deal with his power. In the past few years, Iron Mike has grappled with health challenges, sparking worries among certain fans regarding his endurance for the upcoming bout. Nevertheless, glimpses of Tyson's training sessions in preparation for the highly anticipated fight reveal that his formidable strength and agility remain a formidable challenge for Paul. In the same podcast, Jake Paul got a sneak peek at Tyson's freshest boxing workout footage. Recent training, I think, I think you should watch. I don't know if you've seen his recent training footage, but it's pretty absurd. I still think we're kind of grazing over his age. I think we should touch on that a little bit more. But this is him at 57. Yeah, this is what I watched before I made the parlay that he was knocking you out. So you have a parlay in... Wait, no. What <laughs> the audible? Um, let me see this. As you can see, after watching the footage for a few seconds, Paul begins to formulate a response. His girlfriend, Judah Leerdam, who was also starring on the podcast, then asked him, what if Tyson knocks him out? Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he sounds nervous. Just look away. <laughs> no, like that that will not be good. Babe. No, just look away. Okay, but he also just trained Francis Ngannou, who just got his f***ing head smashed off. So I, I actually, now that I think about it, I'm about to see if I can get a cash out on this parlay. Later in the episode, when the possibility of Jake Paul getting knocked out by Mike Tyson was mentioned, Paul dismissed the concern, expressing confidence in his own abilities. He attributed his sharpness and speed as key factors that would prevent such an outcome. Paul also highlighted his consistent activity and experience in the boxing arena over the years, claiming that this has helped to eliminate any nerves before a fight. Yeah, no, I just, I'm too sharp and fast. <laughs> That's it. Nothing That's like personal, it. no spiritual. Oh, I mean, I'm just, yeah, like, I think just being active and, like, being the man in the arena for years and years now, like, uh, like I don't even get nervous. Like, I, the nerves are not even there anymore. Like, yeah, but it hasn't been the man in the arena. Paul suggested that, for him, fighting in an arena feels more intimate and personal, which in turn makes the experience less intimidating. Paul concluded by downplaying the significance of the stadium setting for their upcoming match implying that he does not expect it to add any undue pressure or challenge. It's been the man, or it's been the man in the arena, but not the man in the stadium. So that well, I guess is the same shit. I think an arena, it can feel more intimate and personal. This is gonna be like, it's not even gonna be, feel as crazy, I don't think. Better picks is the simplest. Meanwhile, we know that Tyson remains resolute in showcasing his readiness for the upcoming bout against Paul by sharing glimpses of his rigorous training routine across multiple social media channels. In a recent update, Tyson demonstrated his strength by showing his workout regimen. Let's do Although Tyson doesn't speak, the video is captioned. Tyson wrote, back to it, round after round. High intensity exercises like this are a solid form of cardio. Cardio doesn't mean you have to go for a run or use all the cardio equipment in the gym. All depends on your goals and abilities. On the other hand, Pauli Molina G, a boxing pundit and ex-world champion, has cast skepticism on the authenticity of the training videos shared by Mike Tyson. He said, I got to say, man, I'm not sure where Tyson is with his motivation. I don't know how recent the videos are because I spoke to some people who were with Tyson not that long ago, and he didn't look the most active. I don't know if the video reel is recent or just created to create headlines. 
Malinaji expressed skepticism regarding the authenticity of the videos. He exacerbated the uncertainty by asserting acquaintance with individuals connected to Tyson, who disclosed to him that Tyson's recent activity levels have been notably low. He said, I don't know if it's a recent video of him hitting the pads to tell you the truth, because I saw some people not long ago, in the last couple of months, and he was very chilled out. He was not discussing anything physical. Meanwhile, Jake Paul responded to Conor McGregor after the former UFC champion, suggested that public interest in a fight between Tyson and Paul was lacking. Conor McGregor shared his insights on the impending match. He said, Oh geez, it's a bit strange you know. The interest is low. I don't know. I don't understand it. I wish well for Mike Tyson. McGregor believes that the level of excitement surrounding a potential matchup between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul is rather tepid. However, Paul's dissatisfaction with McGregor's perspective is palpable, to say the least. During his broadcast on the BS podcast, Paul expressed, Connor, you're claiming that interest in the fight is lacking, yet the previous bout, you announced garnered a flurry of attention with thousands of articles penned over several days and widespread discussion about your last match. Moreover, Paul emphasized the unprecedented online engagement the fight announcement had received, mentioning the tens of millions of views on Instagram alone, not only from their own posts, but also from various sports pages, indicating a high level of public interest. Paul added, In that same multiple-day span, there were 10,000 articles written about this. No fight ever has done these numbers, in terms of face-off views and Instagram reels. Just on our main pages alone, it's like 50 or 60 million Instagram views on both of our posts, not to mention every single other sports page posting it. Jake Paul addressed the negativity from some sectors, including from established figures like Conor McGregor, suggesting that their criticism might stem from jealousy. He added, This is in my mind, the biggest fight the world will ever see. There's no reason for them to be jealous. I get people are jealous, but when the old heads like Conor are trying to hate, it's like, why are you trying to pull people down? When questioned about its potential magnitude compared to McGregor's bout with Floyd Mayweather, which garnered 4.3 million purchases in North America, Paul confidently asserts that it will surpass the second highest PPV viewership of all time. Paul said, it'll be more viewed, a thousand percent. Obviously it's free, so we can't compare pay-per-view numbers. The fight just had to make sense for the streaming platforms. There has to be a high allure. Whether revered or reviled, the match between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson is a testament to the evolving landscape of combat sports and celebrity influence. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.